Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us at Park City Milan. Today, we're going to talk about art installation with architect and exhibition designer, Sebastian Rodriguez Mendieta. Uh, hello, Sebastian. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. We are so glad that you, you are with us today. Thank you so much. Okay, I have a couple of uh, questions for you because you know that I'm very curious about um, art and art spaces, exhibitions, and also I'm a curator. So we can also discuss about, discuss about all these stuff together, I think. I was curious uh, about, um, for example, let me ask you this. What is your philosophy on design and life? Um, well, it's kind of a tough question, I think. Um, there are a lot of things. Uh, I think passion, as sometimes I describe myself as a really passionate person, uh, is one of the things that actually move more in, in my daily life. Like I've been passionate about multiple things, I think. Um, in general, in work, uh, I really love to what I do in terms of how I invest my more than time is heart in what I'm actually doing. Mm -hmm. and uh, and how do I look at things uh, if I'm, I'm really passionate about how I look at things I think that I'm in the right path so so I think that's my philosophy to be passionate about what I'm doing okay. I I'm curious why did you want to become a first place an a, a architect and then an exhibition designer um okay so um, I kind of, it is in my blood. My father is an architect. So when I was really young, I started to help him with uh, architectural design. Like I, I remember I was 12, 13 years old when I started playing with AutoCAD. And my father told me just, if you want to have fun, just have AutoCAD. I don't know how a parent can say that to a, a son because right now I don't like AutoCAD. I don't work with AutoCAD. And, um, so he told me to start digging a little bit. I mean, he, he wanted me to be an architect after all. My mom was against that, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy that I became an architect. And it's in my blood. So I started like digging into it. Then I, I grew up uh, to actually help him construct uh, a house we had back in Colombia. And then I started just studying and, and loving, more, like more than design is how, how to experience architecture, I think. So that's what I actually was moved about architecture. Yeah, that's a good answer. And what about exhibition design? Why did you choose that path? So um, it's, it's kind of uh, an evolving path. So of course I like architecture, but in a sort of way, then I started I studied as well. I'm a minor in photography, so mm -hmm. I. I tried to. I'm start. I started to see uh, architecture from a different point of view because photography actually helps you reinterpret what you are seeing, and it depends on the eye of the viewer. Mm -hmm. So then, when I started uh, studying architecture, I feel uh, photography. I started to feel a little stuck, like I have felt overwhelmed, like this overwhelming sensation of of stagnation in in architecture. Like if I was designing an office, it was mm -hmm. just an office. Or a house, it was just a house. And for me, of course, there are multiple variations of how to design it. But for me, it's, it was kind of a stalking point. I actually, um, I remember my thesis dissertation in my bachelor. Uh, it was kind of tough because I couldn't decide that at the end what to materialize. I had uh, like a strong theory. I had a strong philosophy. But at the end, I didn't have a good result because, because I couldn't focus on an exact thing to do. Mm -hmm. I was always changing it, always reinterpret what I was reading. So it was kind of tough. Then I understand that uh, I wanted to like have a game changing in what I designed in architecture. So um, I, I become with the path of uh, viewing art as a way in which to reinterpret architecture. And then I, that like uh, maybe a thesis that uh, followed me all over my master's degree. And since and until right now, actually, is uh, how to interpret architecture through a poetic way or through an oniric way. Mm -hmm. So that's what actually is moving me to exhibition design as well, to how to interpret architecture through different kinds of things, performances, sculptures, yeah. immersive sound uh, exhibitions, so 
this is how I actually kind of evolved this, this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what about the role of exhibition designers in art? Can you tell us about that? Um, I think it's a really um, interesting process because, mm -hmm. as for instance, we have talked so, sometimes about curatorial practices and exhibition design. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a role in which it is how to be immersed in the space with the with what it is surrounding mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. uh, in terms of art, in terms of um, architecture as well. So how to mix both worlds. I think that's the role of exhibition designer. Beyond, of course, uh, having this, um, following the path of a uh, concept that uh, it is, uh, sometimes it is proposed by the artist or the, or the creator that is uh, actually dealing with this, is how to, in, have this concept and try to mimetize it with architecture. I think mm -hmm. that's the main point mm -hmm. as, a, as an exhibition designer. Okay, good. So um, let's go through your uh, presentation that I, oh, I'm so curious about as well. So uh, right now I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I would like to show some examples of uh, mm -hmm. different types of exhibition design with me. Just open one more. Uh, so uh, through all the all, all these two years, I studied in the master in visual arts and curatorial studies in, in Milan. Mm -hmm. I uh, deal with different kind of exhibitions and art installations with different types of artists. We're passing from a production, a photography studio, until uh, a, a musician that is right now where who would with I work with. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's different types of exhibitions that I make. Uh, Let me ask this uh, then. For example, what is the challenges uh, do you face when you're creating a space for uh, visual arts or um, let's say per performance art or digital art? Uh, it has to be challenging because they're uh, totally different, um, um, not different way, but it's a different material, different uh, structures. What do you think about it? What is the challenge for you? I think one of the biggest challenges is the tangibility of the space. <laughs> so sometimes architecture is a, I don't wanna say, it's tough, but it's a little uh, limited with, mm -hmm. of course, what you want to do. Sometimes you just want to get crazy and hang things in the, in the ceiling or just sure. open holes in the, in the walls <laughs> just to have a, a better view or a better light in the space. But of course, architecture, uh, sometimes it uh, limited. Doesn't allow this. you. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the, the best thing. That is a challenge to actually try to make all of these worlds try to connect as what you have in hand after all. I see. Okay, so I'm gonna show you um, a first presentation with uh, I actually made mm -hmm. with, um, so this is this, this, this one. So during my master's degree, I, I came in with an idea for a project for uh, the Sachi Gallery. So it was, mm -hmm. uh, an assignment we had with a teacher, which I, I really follow him. Uh, his, uh, his name is Andres Brickman, Brickmanis, mm -hmm. and he's a creator in right now here in Milan. And he um, randomly choose artists for each student and randomly uh, different type of work. So you have to create a, a project like an exhibition design and a curatorial practice to, with a lot of different types of things. So that was a challenge for me, which I actually took it to my heart because I, I dig into so much. So for instance, there are, this is kind of the creator. So you have to analyze which was the purpose of this creator, yeah. then understand each one of the artists. Mm -hmm. so and it instance, is so hot. <laughs> Aaron Downey, and, so, and he's so different type of artists. I mean, I for example, imagine. Sean Downey is a painter, then it's a Matthew Barney, which is a, an audiovisual artist, mm -hmm. uh, Sophie Cal, which is, I mean, like a, one of the biggest uh, photographers for me as well. Uh, I think there's a Massimo Bartolini, which is a sculpturist. Mm -hmm. Then Alexander Rochenko, which is a really different type of art, uh, art and a really 
different type of mentality of, of art. Uh, and then is the Sachi Gallery, which, which has um, like a really limited space. So what to do with the space? What to understand about the space? So I started digging into the architecture of it and try to understand how was the light, how was the space, how big, how were the dimensions of, of each one of the pieces I was going to choose? What did I need it, for instance? If I was going to project um, video, which, uh, which things I should need to do it? So I came up with a plan. I started uh, through, of course, the tools and all the things I had uh, in architecture. I started constructing a 3D model of this space of the Sachi Gallery, and then put all of these pieces of art, which became this kind of a proposal. Uh, for instance, this is how to enter the exhibition. The exhibition was named Take Care of Yourself, and this was kind of a voyeuristic view of the of the of the piece of art. So, of course, because of the difference of the, each one of the pieces of art, you have to find a middle point. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of a middle point, how to understand it from a voyeuristic point of view mm -hmm. and how to understand it, how all of the pieces of art connect with each other. So for instance, this is another render, which I really like this one, how, how these uh, paintings are in the in a, in a same narrative of the of Rochenko's piece of art, which is completely different, of course. And then how, how all of this started to, to have a narrative in which was a randomly, but at the same time, how the viewer was going through all of them in a in a process. For example, why didn't you choose to um, uh, put them on the wall besides on the center of the uh, room? So the the whole idea of this exhibition was to understand the piece of art, a piece of art, not just as a label frame, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but through all of the, all of the points. So I designed it like, like a system in which you can go through uh, three, 360 degrees around it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So at the end of the, at the end of the exhibition, I, I did this kind of system in which you actually understand that, that the, the, um, the frame wasn't a, a limitation for your art, or there wasn't a limitation between the piece of art, which actually, usually we have that the, the, the piece of art is on the wall and you have this distance yeah. between you and the, and the painting or the sculpture as well and this was more like uh, a tangibility of observing more than mm -hmm. going to see the the piece of art from a from a limited perspective mm -hmm. but try to be more connected with it try mm -hmm. to dig more into text on, on the piece of art and this was the process so at the end it was of course it was a really imaginary thing to create but still it, it was this kind of thing like if you see there's this hangers mm -hmm. The wall and in the left, so you can go around the piece. Of it. So mm -hmm. that, that was that was. It. It's more interactive. We it interact yeah. with, with the art as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It was kind of a more immersive, of course, mm -hmm. uh, exhibition. Mm -hmm. uh, one one thing that I, I would like to to show to share with you is um, why did I started this uh, with this project kind of this project, which is. Uh, I think is one of my pillars of, of creating exhibition design. So everything started starts, I think, with your own self. Mm -hmm. For instance, I don't like to live in a space, like a limited space. And uh, I feel, uh, again, like this feeling of stagnation if I had my room mm -hmm. the same way more than a certain uh, time. So I like to move things all the time. For instance, I, sometimes I move my, my, my bed, I move... <laughs> or uh, I put lamps in different positions so mm -hmm. I have different view of lights. Why do you do and that? I, I don't know. It, it, is, it makes me feel kind of a... Uh, I, don't, I don't like to feel more in a comfort zone. I, I don't like the comfort mm -hmm. zone. Sometimes. Because like I'm doing the same thing because of I ask actually. I, I do, Generally, I have to move some stuff. I don't know why. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> I think, of course, with with uh with the recent uh, thing of the pandemic, it mm. helps a lot the, the the soul and and how we perceive the space. Sometimes it actually helps your mind to free yourself mm -hmm. to change the space because you are so um I don't know like uh, really you have a behavioral uh, routine in which you get up, you go to the bathroom, then you go mm -hmm. to work in your house, and it's all every every time is the same. You don't have a diff a different perspective. So. If you change things sometimes, it makes you feel more comfortable. 
it mm -hmm. gives it's kind of a sensation of breathing inside the space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, through, through, of course, I, uh, because I had to stay in, in, in Milan. Like right now, I live in Milan. And I, had, uh, I decided to stay in Milan through the, all the pandemic. If, if people were telling me to go back, I said, no, no, I have to stay. I have to stay in Milan. I don't want to, of course, the, the fear of this uh, virus and, of course, everything that's around it. But I have to say, no, I, I want to stay in my space. I, have, I want to have the challenge of uh, confronting myself into the space. Mm -hmm. So I started digging into my own self. Which are the things that I actually need to survive, kind of a, a survival kit through the pandemic? So I started constructing kind of a text, uh, how like a really personal text in which I, I started understanding different objects, which I consider important in my daily life. For instance, pictures, the camera, which I also like sometimes the camera for me is more than a tool, an extension of your own body. And then it's uh, the plants, books. Uh, I, I build up some weights with cement, uh, with concrete, sorry. And a pair of chairs, like mobiliary is as well uh, helpful. And what, what we were telling before that the, the, the trying to connect with plants sometimes actually really helps a lot with this. And how the, this, this configuration of different objects helps uh, understand the space difference. For instance, there was my room, and this is how I transformed with the, all of the subjects. Mm. And then uh, this, is a, this is the kitchen and the, the um, where, 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 where we, I usually was, I, I was alone mm -hmm. during the pandemic, so I had the, the house for myself mm -hmm. to play around it. So how to configure the space differently. So this is how it looks when with the objects. With the same this object. is the the lobby of, mm -hmm. yeah with the same objects with exactly mm -hmm. the same objects and then this is like the kind of the lobby and how i construct the space with different objects this is this was a room which was uh empty for the entire pandemic like it didn't have anything and how it starts to to make it full so this this plane of changing distributions of objects actually helped me try to define Mm. Uh, the spaces and feel more comfortable but then I understand it that when people started arriving back uh, like coming back to the house mm -hmm. they were under, I was changing their routine as well with these mm -hmm. objects so sometimes I leave some plants in the living room sometimes I leave uh, two or three plants in the bathroom so how this changed and it actually works not, not only with me but I was configuring the space mm -hmm. or the, um, the routine of everybody through my own identity Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I think this is how you work. This question actually, because I was curious about, for example, when you're uh, designing exhibition spaces, can you um, put um, on the design or reflect, let's say, uh, your style? Because everyone has a style, and um, sometimes you are limited by some stuff like uh, the ar architecture building or some rules or other stuff. How can you feel that you reflect your um, style into the design? Um, For example, yeah, you I mean, did here because of that, you, you, your personal style is there. Uh, you spread all around the house. Uh, and at the same time, you can do it uh, on exhibition design process as well, I think. So I think, for instance, I think it depends, of course, on the exhibition. Sure. How you connect with the sure. piece of the About exhibition. the topic as well. But, yeah, exactly. So how you how you dialogue with all of these things. But I think one of the most important things that I actually take into consideration is, is uh, how to connect with uh, a sort of nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, for instance, uh, I get through the process of my career and the process of my life, I like to dig into memories and to, to dig into what actually moves people mm. in general. Or what are they passionate about? Memories, um, so, uh, memories shows emotions because of that. You, you yeah, exactly. That. So, so when you, I, when you uh, appeal into nostalgia, is of course it's delicate, but it's really pudding. Like it's really into what it, what it, what it feels. So sometimes. For instance, that's what I really love about photography, that you, you are not framing, uh, of course, an event, but you're actually expressing a, um, an emotion through, through this uh, image. Mm -hmm. And you are expressing to others what it feels to you. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. for instance, I don't know. I remember I had uh, one of my biggest influences in photography was a photographer. Uh, I had a teacher, which uh, his name is Camilo George. And he uh, had this experiment with us, which was uh, if we had a picture of someone we loved in our, in our uh, wallet. So he said to us, okay, let, let me have that picture. And then he asked, can I cut this picture in half? Mm. And he said, and we said, of course not, you can't do that. And I said, it's just a picture. Yeah. But of course, yeah. what represents you is mm -hmm. in a deeper bond with the picture. Mm -hmm. You're you are actually having uh, someone you love inside your wallet through a mm -hmm. picture, and you're expressing that this is someone that you love. And I, I think that it, it was really into what I'm trying to explain, like into yeah, this yeah, uh, mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that that I think that that's one of the most personal things. And um, then of course, this is a really small scale of exhibition. But then uh, I had this opportunity to dig into an exhibition that contains the sea itself mm -hmm. through, the, through the pandemic. So I came up with an idea of, uh, of mixing philosophy of Foucault and, uh, of, in his book on, um, his book is a Discipline and, Punish and Punishment. Mm -hmm. And he, he explains about the, the Panopticum. So the Panopticum is, uh, as you know, it's a place um, like it was a, a philosophy of uh, imprisoning people, and there was a middle point in which the the they like the like a watchtower that was surrounded by cells, and you can see all of the cellmates through a, a light of the of a window. Well, they, like it's really big into process about punishment in this point. And in his book, he relates uh, a kind of a process uh, in which cities during the uh, Black Death period in, in Europe mm -hmm. were uh, submitted by. And uh, so there was like a kind of an itinerary or a protocol to lockdowns. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, we're, we're actually right now going through a kind of a, this pandemic and this, like we're kind of repeating the story. And in Milan, there's like these monuments that are, that, that are the doors that before, like back in the Renaissance mm -hmm. and the medieval, they were the entrance from one city. For instance, there's Porta Romana, which is the door that came that comes from Rome, or Porta Venezia, which is the, the, the door that you come from Venice. And mm -hmm. so I said, okay, let's have this um, understanding of the city monuments as an exhibition. And the 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 the, the, the um, the citizens are going to participate as, as part of the exhibition, as part of the performance. Mm -hmm. So what I came up with, of course, this, these doors are open and some of them, you can cross them as, as paths. Some of them are just monuments. So I, I came up with this like kind of itinerary in which um, I closed the doors mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it was kind of fun to actually build this because it actually made into fear people like, because routine changes, if you change these kind of things in the city. Yeah. And actually it, it makes uh, a little control over people and at the same time it generates kind of fear. So sure. it's kind of interesting to, to play with this kind of experiences. And I close the doors. Of course, uh, the doors are not existent, but uh, I just wanted to prove that we change our lifestyle with just one detail. And it was just closing the door. Sometimes yeah. this door didn't actually lead to nowhere. You can just go around the door and that's it because these doors were surrounded by these walls that surrounded the, the cities. Mm -hmm. But right now there's no walls, just the, the door. But if you close the door, how it changes your perspective of the space. Sure. And it's completely amazing how people are, are actually interacting with this kind of things. And it's just a door. Yeah. So it was really, really nice how to, to interact with these kind of things. Interesting idea. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, right now I'm I'm working more in the, um, like public art and moving around a little bit through Europe and Africa with with some projects. Uh, so for instance, I really love to work with uh, with Revit mm -hmm. because sometimes architects feel okay. People feel a little limited with uh, these softwares. So okay, like AutoCAD is just to build uh, plans, but and Revit is just to make uh, processes in which you have the data of the materials and yeah. like a more technical part. 
But I use Revit as, as a tool to actually convey to some projects. For instance, in another example, uh, I had this, this is my thesis dissertation, but beyond showing my thesis, I just want to show you mm -hmm. um, like, uh, like these pioneers of exhibition design, uh, which one of them is, I think is one of the most amazing ones, which is called the, the Mersbo. It's, so this was uh, an artist who built it up here, who built it up a space through, memo so through memorabilia. Uh, so it, it is a really random space, which is called the Mersbo. Mm -hmm. um, so the artist is called Kurt Schlitters, and he built up uh, these like really strange um, objects and columns that are that are not like actually sustaining things, but they're just like a, a collage of a lot of things inside. And he was reorganizing the space through all of these objects. And as you can see, you can I mean, like in a, in a really general view, you can understand what you're seeing. But this is a normal room. This is a normal room in a house, but he, with all of these objects, was was building up these these experiences, and and I think, of course, this 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 disappeared uh, during the during the Second World War, mm. but they tried to reconstruct it like the exact same. But you, as you can see, it was a construction of the space through different type of things yeah. that moved him, and this is actually one of the most amazing things in I think in in, in exhibition design how to understand these kind of things through just an experience. That's it, I think that's This is the whole point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, that that's, one, one, that's pretty much it, that the things that I wanted to show you about. Okay, then I'm going to ask another question. <laughs> um, for example, um, what do you love the most, being an um, exhibition designer? I, I know that <laughs> when you when you're uh, explaining all the things uh, you did, uh, you 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 were excited to explain it as well. When you're doing it, I'm sure that you are more uh, most excited person the, uh, in the world. That it, because when you're explaining them, and also you have this passion, uh, I, I feel your passion about this. So what period or process do you like most when you're designing a space? Um, it's tough. <laughs> I think it's tough, but I think uh, I love challenges. I really like challenges in this work uh, mm -hmm. because it makes me move more passionate with what, what I'm intrigued to. And um, I think one of the most uh, amazing things that actually moved myself is to see myself in the exhibition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm creating the exhibition for a lot more different kind of people, but I would like to feel immersed in this exhibition through the pieces of art. So how to construct a dialogue? I think that's, that's what, what moved me more about this, that is, how should I feel in this exhibition? How should I feel with these pieces of art in this space? How should I connect? Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the most amazing things that moved me when I'm doing this kind of work. How, how should I connect with, the, with what I'm doing? I mm -hmm. think. You're also thinking that, about uh, the um, audience way, audiences thinking as well. Yeah. Because of that, you're also yeah, yeah. For instance, focusing on- I have a- I have a kind of a personal story. I remember, uh, but I, I don't know, two years ago, I went to the Museum of Cinema. I'm really mm -hmm. passionate about cinema. And I visited this, uh, this, this um, museum in, in Turin, in, in, here in Italy. And there was a lot of, deep, I, like, there was a lot of uh, history about it. And I love the history about it. But what actually moved, my, moved me was uh, I remember there was a cartoon I used to watch when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I remember I took a picture of it, I sent it to my mom and said, look what I found in the, in the museum. So I think that, that was one, like one triggered in the exhibition that mm -hmm. I was connecting through my own experience. 
yeah. in the exhibition. And you're going to amazing. always, uh, you're always going to remember that moment. And it's because exactly. it touched you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think when we connect with the exhibition in a more personal point of view, mm -hmm. I think, of course, it's, it's extremely difficult to connect with all of the world, all of the world. But try to focus on the emotions of the persons you are trying to aim. I think that is one of the most important things. Okay. Rather than showing the art, by trying to move them through the emotions. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's pretty much it. What advice would you like to give uh, students, architecture students and also design students and uh, who want to become student, uh, designers and architects as well? Um, so uh, I think it's kind of, kind of a tough question, uh, but uh, of course I said to myself, uh, maybe a, a question that I asked to myself as well, is what, what should move me and what should I, I would like to have an, an advice is beyond that to have passion on what you're doing, because I think it's too general, is try to feel in the space you are constructing. If you're actually designing a space, try to make it for yourself. What should you feel about this place? So for instance, if you are designing a, a house, how will you feel if you, if you actually live in that house? Even if for, it's for a client, if, if you, you actually are trying to be empathic with the user rather than, because I think that's one of the kind of flings about architect, contemporary architecture. It's kind of a, have this distance between the user and the, and the architect uh, or the yeah the client or, and the designer so i think it's this is how should it be how should i feel in this space is it worth living in this space so i think that that's one of the most biggest advice i can i can give and yeah be try to be more passionate about what you are doing that, that's passion is important absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah i think it's one of the best things for me like to be passionate about things yeah. That's good. Uh, we are so appreciated um, with, to you about uh, this topic and being with us today. And um, you are also going to have some workshops, art at work, art installation workshops. Yes. And yes. we will also announce them uh, at our website as well. You can also check that one. And uh, thank you so much, Sebastian. It was so nice. Thank to you for your time. It was a really nice chat. It was a really nice. I had fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate you being with us today. You can also check our website to see related workshops and courses and also register to be updated about upcoming webinars. Backstudymilan.com.